it's me, the Book Nester, and I'm here to talk about 112263 by Stephen King. This is my first Stephen King novel. I've never read any of his other books, largely because he scares the bejesus out of me, just letting you know. But this book is a little bit different, as I'm sure most of you Stephen King fans out there know. And if you aren't a Stephen King fan, this might be exactly the book to dive into. Now, I am not going to go into deep reviewing of his literary skills and all this. The man is so well known and has published so many books. I almost think that discussions of any kind about his actual writing is almost null and void. He is an incredible storyteller and that's what is selling his books. This is no different but it is over 860 some odd pages long and I did not read it. I listened to it on audiobook and it was narrated by Craig Wesson and if you're interested in taking this book on I think this is a fantastic way to do it. Now I have been listening to this book <laughs> since January and that may seem like a really long time, but you have to understand, I was getting it from the library and that what would happen is if I wasn't done with it in my 14 days, off it would go back into the queue and there I went into the queue waiting for it to come back out. So it could be months sometimes because it's an incredibly popular book. This is why I think that the story actually itself was so wonderful. As I would have huge breaks in the middle of it, it might be a month or so or even longer before I got it back. And I never lost where I was at in the story. It reminded me of if I had had a really amazing storytelling uncle. And I only got to see him maybe every couple weekends, every couple months, right? It was like going back and listening to him tell me the story. And that's kind of what it felt like. And I have to say that when it finished, I was really sad because I wasn't going to go to my uncle's anymore. In the, this case, you know, if you read on the back blurb of the book or if you go to Goodreads and listen, look at it, I think it's pretty well done, but here's a brief little summary. Stephen King's 112263 Special Reading Agent, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to stop the assassination of John F. Kennedy, which is to occur on November 11, 1963, in Dallas, Texas. As always, should you be caught or killed, the secretary will disavow any knowledge of your actions or validate your parking. This file will self-destruct in five seconds unless you go back in time and then it will restart this message over so that it would probably be five seconds plus five seconds to go back and add another five seconds carry the one oh never mind just get on with it step number one get yourself to 1958 using the back pantry area of the local diner as your rabbit hole step number two is transportation obtain a drab and discreet car nothing that anyone can describe Oh, oh, okay. A bright yellow sunliner? I guess that'll have to do. Step three, you need to eventually get to Texas from Maine. Now this is so that you can prove that Lee Harvey Oswald operated on his own. Um, yeah, none of this. Yeah, gotta prove this didn't happen. Step number four is stop that assassination of JFK. That's all you have to do. And finally, step five, you need to go back to that rabbit hole and return to 2011 to where you believe that you will walk into a utopia where Kennedy was never assassinated. However, you have to remember there is no going back through the rabbit hole for if you do that, if you go back through it, it will be as if you hit the reset button and everything will return as it was before. So if you're willing to accept this mission, it's a fantastic story. There's so many other stories that are developed. There's even an incredible romance along the way. And I thought it was handled pretty well. The only thing that I would even put as a negative on this is I was not a huge fan of the narrator's version of a woman from Georgia. This one little Georgia peach, hmm. Whenever you have that soft Southern dialect, it's hard for a male to pull it off, but he does pretty well. So overall, enjoyed the story a great deal. Learned a lot about what was happening in Dallas at the time. Um, and then it also just, again, those little tidbits of learning about what life was like, both up in Maine and both down in Texas. It comes off as a saga almost, but it lasts from 1958 to 1963. Is this span of time. And you're with him the entire time. And so it was, it was this journey to that end point. One thing though, and I don't know if it's because if I 
listen to it is why this is really, really kind of annoying to me. But I really hate the overuse of a word. And in a book of 869 pages or whatever it was, you know, it was 30 hours of audio I listened to. If I have to hear the word obdurate one more time, I'm going to go nuts. Because basically the entire time through this book, it's the past is trying to stop this main character from achieving the goal of changing it. So the past does not want to be changed and that's what you feel the entire time. I kept, feeling, I kept thinking, oh my gosh, this is like Sesame Street. Because Sesame Street always is brought to you by the letter B and the number seven. <laughs> this was like, this is brought to you by the word obdurate. So that was the only little thing that bothered me throughout it. And probably now if you listen to it, it probably bothered you because I've highlighted it. But um, still a fantastic book. It has nothing to do with the book. Just that, I mean, well, that is the main plot driver. It's just they used the word a little too much. And I get it. I get it. Probably 150 pages into it, I would have gotten it. I, I got it. So now on to the last thing I wanted to discuss. And that is the Hulu version of 11-22-63. So Hulu has created a mini-series. And I was looking forward to watching it. And I told myself I would not watch it until I had finished listening to the book. And I am so glad that I did. But now that I have, I've only been able to get through two episodes because I'm so frustrated. If you have watched it and not read the book, if you can erase that from your mind and be able to read the book, please do. If you've not watched it, do not watch it. Read the book. And the reason is there's so such a difference between the two. Now, I understand this is a long book. And it's over, you know, 1958 to 1963. So we're talking a five-year period. They really cut it down to where it's about a two-year period, number one. So you're going to miss a lot. But they also are hyping up the past and the way it's attacking Jake. And it almost is trying to make it supernatural and make it feel as if it's a borderline a horror type movie or series. And I guess that's what people will expect from Stephen King. But the irony is, is when you read the book, Stephen King does it beautifully where it doesn't seem unbelievable. It actually almost feels that these things could happen if you were in fact trying to go back and change the past. The other thing is is there are addition of characters that are not in the original and you would think there's plenty of characters in it uh, and then changing the purpose or the actual role of a character. I mean I'm only watching two of the episodes I'm I'm sure I'm missing a lot but I just feel that they've taken it down a road that is not what I read. And I think it's sad because it's almost like they're trying to make it what everybody perceives Stephen King is. Whereas this book, when you read it, I really, I loved the subtlety and how he sprinkled all of these opportunities for the past to disrupt your changing some major events. Just my two cents. I don't know that I'll ever pick it up physically, but I think I would definitely listen to it on audio. Thanks for watching. And let me know what you're reading. Bye.